one of the um, experiences that I've really appreciated so much is um, as part of Ravel and Ravel, we've created curriculum that can be used with college students in the workplaces um, and also with middle and high school students. And um, and as we've been piloting it, it's been it's been really um, humbling to see the impact that it's had on people. Um, that these stories, the power of these stories, have really challenged people's assumptions about one another and stereotypes. I was doing a training for a disaster response team um, in our local community, and um, one of the participants ran up to me before it started and um, asked me if I was Beth Katz with Project Interfaith, and I said yes I was. And she said, I am one of the people that was in the one of the college classes that piloted Ravel and Ravel, and I want you to know it has completely changed how I think about religious and spiritual um, you know, identities and diversity. And she said, but I also want you to know I didn't even want to do it when we first started. I really thought when they told me what we were going to be doing um, and, and watching these videos, she said that she she really did not want to have anything to do with it. It was something that she felt really uncomfortable with and um, just didn't see the relevance for her work in caregiving um, and healthcare. And after watching the video, she said, um, now it's one of my favorite resources and I'm going to share it with others, um, both in my classroom and those that are um, in the workplace. And um, and I was really taken aback by this because um, I think that just underscores the power that, again, stories have in helping shift the way that we think about each other and about ourselves. I think the main concept that we we consider at Project Interfaith, um, I think we believe in you know the power of storytelling um, and in the power of relationships. Um, to transform people and to really change the way that people consider both themselves and others. Um, that's the starting point. Um, we can't stop, we can't end there, but that that is really critical. Um, just providing, I think, with Ravel and Ravel, part of what we're rec we recognize in Project Interfaith is that depending on where people live and you know the context in which they're operating, they in some cases they may not live in an area where there is a lot of religious and spiritual diversity. That having said that, that is a reality of our world, and it's really important that people understand and consider um, these differences as well as our commonalities. And so we feel like part of the value of Ravel and Ravel is because it's an online tool. We hope that this makes it more accessible for people who may not have the opportunity because of where they live, um, either if they don't have the religious diversity present in their community or if their community is extremely segregated and they have very limited interactions with people who may hold different viewpoints than they do or different um, religious, spiritual, cultural identities than they do. Uh, we hope that this provides a forum where people can at least watch some videos of people who you know, they have a curiosity about because of their religious or spiritual identity and begin to see, again, just kind of the common humanity that runs through all of us and connects all of us, as well as the, the differences that define us. Um, and, and hopefully also appreciate the incredible complexity and diversity that exists within all of these religious and spiritual identity groups. Interfaith, we have a number of different products and services and programs that we use to try to help people um, be aware of their assumptions uh, and and maybe challenge those assumptions in some cases. Um, I think making assumptions is a very fundamental quality in humans. Um, Nobody is immune to that, and um, and I think that part of it is just making people aware of of the the fact that we do and we do make assumptions all the time about all sorts of things. And it's not about judging people because of those assumptions. It's rather trying to get them to critically reflect on where are these assumptions coming from and really challenging the validity of those assumptions. Because assumptions can be dangerous if, it, um, if they are incorrect and if they really, uh, I think they can lead to, a, to siloing. Um, what we are trying to do at Project Interfaith is provide online resources and tools that make it easier for people to examine and explore their own identities and assumptions 
and then begin to think about, to consider how those assumptions impact others and to look at um, how we can build their skills to be able to talk with others and engage with others uh, so that they can, they can really reflect on um, and consider if those assumptions are even valid um, and to really hopefully help build connections beyond that. So we, I invite you to check out our website, projectinterfaith.org, um, and see the different resources that we offer, as well as um, utilize Ravel and Ravel.com, which is one of our um, most uh, significant resources that we have. Um, so thank you so much for taking time to watch this video, and um, we look forward to hearing from you. Bye.